Yo guys, what is going on? Cyrix here. Welcome back to another video. Today we show you the best strategies to get Pirate Legend fast in Sea of Thieves. Enjoy! To achieve Pirate Legend you need to be level 50 in 3 different trading companies. They are the Gold Hoarder, the Order of Souls, the Merchant Alliance, the Hunter's Call, the Sea Dogs and the Reaper's Bones. In my opinion the Hunter's Call and the Sea Dogs are not worth grinding. The Hunter's Call takes ages to level up and to level up the Sea Dogs you need to play a completely different game mode. So I would stick to the original way by grinding the Gold Hoarders, the Order of Souls and the Merchant Alliance. If you enjoy PvP I would exchange one of these free trading companies with the Reaper's Bones. But let's start with the new emissary system that got introduced into Sea of Thieves with the brand new ships of fortune update. What exactly is an emissary grade and how does it benefit you? You can only be the emissary for one trading company and your emissary grade is measured by the related actions you perform for them. There are 5 different grades to achieve. You will start at 1 and you can max it out to grade 5. As soon as you vote to raise the emissary flag, you start making progress for your current trading company and when you sink or stop representing them, you will lose the progress. Grade 1 will give you a multiplier of 1.25, grade 2 a 1.5, at grade 3 you get a 1.75 multiplier, at 4 it's a multiplier of 2, and at grade 5 you get a 2.5 multiplier. To sail as an emissary you need to buy the emissary flag of the trading company you want to represent and vote on their voting table to represent them. There are different and similar actions you can do to raise your emissary grade for the trading companies. To advance your grade in all three trading companies you can defeat a skeleton fort, a kraken, a megalodon, skeleton ships, and sink Reaper's Bones emissary players. For the gold holders, you raise your grade while picking up voyage, emergent or stolen gold holder treasures and placing them on your ship, completing riddle steps, an entire riddle quest or completing an entire X marks the spot quest. For the Order of Souls, you raise your grade while defeating emergent skeleton captains and captains from bounty quests picking up voyage, emergent or stolen Aura of Souls treasures and placing them on your ship. For the Merchant Alliance you advance it by delivering a cargo run crate, capturing an animal with a crate or picking up voyage, emergent or stolen Merchant Alliance treasures and placing them on your ship. The best way to get a gold hoarder to grade 5 is by buying as much of their voyages and voting for them until you get a voyage with a lot of islands with X marks the spots on them. For the Order of Souls, buy as many voyages as possible and vote for them until you find some islands with 3 to 4 captains on them. For the Merchant Alliance, I would do cargo runs. Catching animals is also working out, but takes a lot longer. It is possible that the merchant on your outpost only sells voyages to catch animals. Then you need to either change the server or buy all of her voyages and wait until the voyages get restocked. If you reach grade 5 in a gold hoarder, the Order of Souls or Merchant Alliance trading company, you can claim yourself the Emissary Voyage of them. The Gold Hoarder Emissary Voyage will give you 4 islands with 5 X marks to spot on each of them and every chest you dig out will be a captain's chest. The Aura of Souls Emissary Voyage will give you 4 islands with 4 captains on each of them and every skull you get will be a villainous skull. And the Merchant Alliance Emissary Voyage will give you a cargo run with 25 crates to pick up and deliver. After you completed the Emissary Voyage, sail to the nearest outpost, sell all of your loot, lower and raise the Emissary Flag and start this process again. There is also a Ashen variant of all free trading companies. It brings you more gold and reputation, 
but is a lot more dangerous than normal voyages. The new emissary system is by far the best way to level up your trading companies fast. But if you like PvP more, you should level up the Reaper's Bones. To raise your grade for the Reaper's Bones, you need to kill other emissary players, pick up voyage, emergent or stolen treasures from any trading company. The fastest way to level up the Reaper's Bones and a fast way to level the other free trading companies is by doing Skull Forts and the Fort of the Damned. Skull Forts guarantee you to get at least a Stronghold Keg, a Stronghold Chest, and some crates and skulls. Each active fort has on average 12 waves of up to 10 skeletons before the first skeleton captain is summoned. After the 12 regular waves of skeletons, the first boss wave will appear with another wave of about 10 skeletons and a skeleton captain. The captain is as strong as any emergent skeleton captain encountered on islands. Once defeated, the skeleton captain will drop a villainous bounty skull. After the first skeleton captain wave has been defeated, the second boss wave will appear, but this time you need to defeat two skeleton captains, an ashen keymaster and an ashen guardian. Aside from another group of skeletons, one of the three fort skeleton lords will appear after you defeated the two skeleton captains. These skeleton lords are slightly weaker than your tall tale of four of the damned skeleton lords. However, they have all the tricks of these lords. Once a skeleton lord is defeated, they will drop a stronghold key and an additional stronghold skull and skeleton's order. The orders give the crew an X marks the spot map with one X that uncovers a rag and bone crate. After the lord is dead, the skull cloud will dissipate, marking the end of the skeleton fort. The Fort of the Dam takes a little bit longer and needs a little bit of preparation. But at the end you will get some awesome loot like a chest of legends, reaper's chests, stronghold chests and skulls. To activate the Fort of the Dam you need all 6 flame of fate and 1 ritual skull. All 6 flames of fate must be collected from the fairy of the Dam and used on a corresponding ferryman statue found within the fort. To get the white flame you need to die from a lightning. To get the pink flame, you need to get killed by a pirate from another crew. The blue flame is obtainable through the death by a shark or megalodon. You can get the green flame when you die from a skeleton. To get the red flame, you need to die from fire. And for the purple flame, you need to die from poison. Shadow Fate Waves are uniquely colored shadow skeletons and to be able to kill them, you need to have the right lantern light for them. There are a total of 12 waves of Shadow Fate skeletons in a Fort of the Damned raid. Each wave will spawn around 8 to 10 skeletons. The first 4 waves will only spawn a single color of Shadow Fate skeletons. The next 4 waves will spawn 2 colors of Shadow Fate skeletons. And at the final 4 waves there will be a mix of 3 different Shadow Fate skeletons. The Ghost of Grey Marrow will spawn as a Skeleton Lord fight and always has the same amount of health no matter the number of players attempting the fort. You could also sink other players and take their loot but the time it takes to think other people could also be invested in doing some voyages and probably getting even better loot. The gameplay I'm showing you is from normal voyages, for those people who don't like Devil's Raw. If you like Devil's Raw, then do Ashen Voyages. These will give you even faster reputation and more gold than the normal ones. For the gold holders, buy as many voyages as possible and vote for them until you get one with a couple of X Marks spot islands. Make sure to have some extra voyages in your inventory so you don't need to sail back to an outpost just to buy voyages. When you completed your current voyage, just vote for another one until you run out of them. For the Order of Souls you can do almost the same thing, buy enough voyages, vote for them until you find a couple of islands with 3 to 4 captains on them. For the Merchant Alliance I would do cargo runs but you can also catch animals. It takes a little bit longer and is less efficient but also works out pretty good. If you're willing to do animal voyages, buy as many of them as possible. Then vote for them and pick up all cages. Now sail around and catch as many golden and black chickens, pigs and snakes as you can. After that, sail to an outpost and buy some more voyages. Vote for them and sail around the Sea of Thieves to sell all of your animals on the corresponding outposts.
For cargo runs, the crew is given a ledger detailing the address of an NPC holding a consignment of delicate goods. The shipment of these cargo crates must be delivered to another NPC by a certain time and date, the details of which are written on each piece of cargo. NPCs can be found on an outpost, sea post or a large island. There is also a Ashen variant of all free trading companies. It brings you more gold and reputation, but is a lot more dangerous than normal voyages. Make sure to also loot the treasures from beaches, floating barrels and shipwrecks. A large flock of seagulls indicates that there is a shipwreck below them. And a small flock marks floating barrels. You could also buy letters of recommendation from Duke every month for 30 doubloons each. These will give you exactly one level, but in my opinion it's not worth to buy these at a low level, but make sure to buy them before a new content update comes out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a great day and I hope I will see you again.